I've got an experimental uh, debrief format here, and I want to talk about sailing on skewed courses. So I've got um, the leeward mark here, and then uh, the course area outlined by rope, windward mark there. Uh, so we've got the wind coming in this direction, um, and the angles of the tiles are sort of your starboard and port tacking angles. Um, so you're going to have to spend a lot more time on starboard tack in this course uh, than on port. Um, so one of the tactics that is often cited uh, on skewed courses um, is sail the long tack first. Um, and then just before I go into why, um, this is also uh, the case, this is the same situation as if you have a square course with sideways cross current. Because if the current is pushing you that way, you have longer to sail on starboard and not as long to sail on port. Um, so, but you can forget current uh, for now, uh, just keep that in mind. So if there is a skewed course and you have a fairly oscillating, like a regularly oscillating wind direction, it's going in a couple of different uh, directions, then when um, the wind uh, shifts a little bit right, you really want to be on starboard tack. If the wind shifts to the middle, doesn't matter which tack you're on, so you should be on the long tack. Okay, so then middle means stay on starboard, sail the long tack first. If the wind goes a little bit left, uh, it depends. How much of the course do you have left? Um, if the wind goes a little bit left and you're just starting this long skewed course, you might want to just eat that header and keep sailing the long tack. And then when the wind goes way left, then you tack onto port um, and cash in uh, your gains on the boats that uh, tack to left in the small shifts. So you want to only tack, um, you want to only tack on the big shifts. Uh, when on the big left shifts, uh, the rest of the time you want to stay on starboard here or on the long tack, whichever the long tack is. So that's the theory behind, between, uh, behind sailing on the long tack first. Um, it's to save, save up for when um, you get big left shifts. You don't want to end up over here uh, because you sailed the short tack first and then get a big left shift. You have nowhere to go. If you tack, um, you already have to tack back because it's the ley line. Uh, so actually the, the other problem with being over, over here is that if you're on the ley line, a lift doesn't help you, does help that boat, and a knock doesn't help you because you tack and you immediately have to tack back um, or you have to sail way over the ley line. So um, the dangers of a ley line are part of the reason that you want to sail that long tack first. But um, you don't want to get too carried away with this idea of sailing the long tack first because at this point there is no long tack anymore. This is now a square course. You've, you've sailed the uh, long part of the leg. Now, if you get even a small left shift, it could be worth tacking on it. And then a small right shift, so this has now become a square course once you get to here. You can forget about what you did at the beginning of the leg. Um, now, there are a bunch of exceptions to sailing the long tack first. Um, usually, if you have any good reason to do a different tactic, it's more important to do that other tactic than to do the, the long tack first. Um, because one of the reasons that you can have a weirdly shaped course like this is because of um, what's happening in the wind. So imagine a long time ago, the course was set up properly. Now there's a reason um, that it's now skewed. The wind has come to the right. Um, and uh, if the wind has come to the right on an oscillating day, it's a good chance it's gonna go back left so sail the long tack first. But if the wind has gone right and it's staying right and you think it's gonna even keep on going further and further and further right, then if the wind is going right, whichever boat gets right first will become the upwind boat. 
So maybe I can draw this out. If you start out uh, level with each other, and then the wind goes right, the right boat gains, and just to make it extreme, the right boat gains a whole bunch like that. Um, and to put it in context, if you get this small shift, a uh, small lift, this boat gains a little, this boat gains a lot. So the farther right you are, when the righty comes in, um, the more you gain from it. So um, if you're thinking back and the course used to be square and there's a slow and steady trend that goes to the right, uh, then there's a good argument that you should sail the short tack first, tack before the ley line, so tack somewhere here, and then let the wind keep going to the right, and that should lift you up to the mark in a perfect world, and then you sail straight to the mark. Whereas these boats, they also get a lift, um, but uh, they... Uh, are downwind, if you imagine this new ladder rung, this new perpendicular line to the wind with the wind going even further right. Um, if you draw a line perpendicular to the wind here, this boat has lost that much to the right hand boat, and this boat has lost that much to the right hand boat with that right shift. So if you're predicting that the wind is going to continue to go right during this leg, then you can sail the short tack first and get into that right uh, shift before the others. Um, so there's an exception to sailing the long tack first. Uh, then another um, situation that's fairly common is that you've got wind rolling in from the right of the course and wind rolling in from the left of the course. And sometimes the boats that are out on this side get that wind first and start, start gaining um, on a boat that's, uh, if, if the wind's coming in from the right, it can catch the right boats first. So, so just keep that in mind too. That could be an exception for why you might want to sail a little bit of the short tack first. Another one is if you are in the lead, you can have a more commanding um, defensive position if, um, so let's say, you have a nice lead and yes you don't have to be the first boat in the in the whole race um maybe there's a clump of boats ahead of you that you can't get to and you're the first of the second half of the boats um you can round this mark then sail for half of the distance it takes this boat to get to the mark so you sail one tile length they sail a tile length then you tack then they sail a tile length, you sail a tile length, um, they round the mark, then you tack. Um, so now you are straight upwind of your competition. If your competition uh, goes to uh, the ley line, maybe that means they were uh, expecting uh, the wind to go right or uh, to increase on the right, uh, then you can tack just below the ley line, um, and they can either tack in your dirty wind or go right to the ley line. If you force them to sail right on the ley line, they don't gain from a lift, because they go over the ley line, they don't gain from a knock. Um, so that's, uh, that's a nice power move. Uh, the other one here, so how was it? Uh, they had, you had tacked one tile length straight up wind of them. So now if they go to tack and sail the long, long tack first, you tack and sail the long tack first and they can't gain. So if you are directly upwind of your competition, um, then if, if they get a lift, you get a lift, you're still in front of them. They get a knock, you get a knock, you're still in front of them. Um, so this is a very good defensive position to be. Uh, so that could be a reason not to immediately sail um, the long tack first. You might take a little bit of safety and then tack if you're leading um, a group of boats or a boat behind you. Um, um, then, oh yes, the other thing I wanted to talk about is exit strategies. 
Um, so if you are the boat um, with the smiley face on it, um, and you have a marginal lane, so you're almost being leave out by this boat, and this boat's almost giving you dirty air, um, but then there's like another boat over here, let's say. Um, uh, so the coaches always say, uh, if you're in dirty wind, tack. And like, fair enough, um, that's right 90% of the time, maybe more. Um, but if this boat tacks, they're gonna have to duck that boat and then maybe there's another boat over here. And before you know it, you've sailed most of the way uh, to the ley line. Um, and now you don't gain from uh, a lift or a knock. Maybe you gain from a small lift. Um, uh, so before you tack on this skewed course uh, where port tack is so valuable because you only get a little bit of port and you get a lot of starboard, um, you might want to just just think a little bit. Can I hold my lane here? Can I hold my lane here? Um, and then if this boat can't hold their lane, maybe they tack and then you see that and then you tack and you only have to duck the back of this boat. Um, and so now you're in a much better position. Um, so the, the point of what I'm saying there is that you have to be more picky about your port tack. So you might want to stay in a marginal starboard tack um, uh, lane as opposed to sailing over the ley line um, and reaching into the, the windward mark. Uh, so there's some thoughts about uh, tactics on a skewed race course.